Well, the date is set. Kansas will have a special session on tax relief. Details on lawmakers' next steps when they return. Plus, it does not have to be this way. It's an election to watch, and it's heating up. We're sitting down with congressional candidates for District 2. Today, former Attorney General Derek Schmidt is weighing in. You're taking a look inside Kansas politics. Welcome in. I'm Rebecca Chung. When lawmakers return to the Capitol, taxes will be their focus. That's where we start today. Joining me in studio is political author and professor Michael Smith. He's going to be breaking things down. All right, Michael, we finally have the date for special session. Lawmakers are meeting this month, June 18th, and now that the governor vetoed their tax plan, they'll have an opportunity to craft another one. But could we see maybe they look into other options, maybe a possible override of that veto? What do you think their next steps will be when they return to the state house? Well, that's a good question. Um, good legislators are good at counting and they're gonna go in having counted the votes. They're not gonna put anything up there if they don't think they have the votes because it will be kind of embarrassing for them. Um, my sense is since they couldn't get past the veto in the regular session, they are gonna have to either recraft the existing proposal or propose something new. The governor is concerned that there it's too much revenue loss and unless they've made some sort of a deal to get some new votes, they're gonna have to ease up on how much revenue loss there would be if they wanna win those additional votes. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the dynamic between the governor and Republican leaders, because they've been butting heads a little bit throughout yes. the session. Um, do you think that they could potentially look at a compromise where you know the governor gets what she wants, Republicans get what they want, or do you think it's more likely that we could see the tax plan lean a little bit more red? Um, that's a good question. So originally what the Republicans tried to do is they took the governor's tax cut proposals and they just rolled them in with theirs and they came up with this huge tax cut proposal. The governor, I'm sure, liked it that her tax cut proposals were in there, but she said, again, it's going to cost the state too much revenue. And so that didn't work. Um, does the governor have a negotiating point where the, the amount of revenue loss could be a little bit more than what she's saying, but not as much as in the last thing she vetoed? Um, there's a lot of kind of, of um, feeling each other out in these kinds of things. Nobody ever just lays down a hard number and says, okay, here's your number. And so I don't know any details, but again, they're gonna be anxious to get out there and campaign. They're gonna to wanna to get this wrapped up fairly quickly. Also, there's been some bad publicity about the cost, even though it's fairly nominal if you look at the whole state budget. And so I don't see them doing something crazy outside the box. I see them uh, trimming their proposal a bit and saying, let's, let's give it another go. And if the governor doesn't like it, then they'll go after her and say, well, thanks to the governor, you don't get your tax cut. But the governor will say, I protected the state budget. And to the point of some Republican leaders, right, or some people on the Republican side as well, they have gone out of their way to also work out a compromise to create a plan yeah. that, you know, you also see some House Democrats siding on with. So tell me, you know, this dynamic that we're seeing where the governor pushes back so much on a bipartisan tax plan, do you think there's any weight there when it comes to some of the arguments that we shouldn't be having the special session in the first place? Well, um, you could make an argument there. I think. In terms of the governor, she is term limited. She won't be running for re-election because of the state constitution. So she's at that point in your career where you pivot to thinking about your legacy. And uh, she clearly sees her legacy as restoring the integrity of the state budget from the brown back years. Years from now, when the book is written about the Laura Kelly administration, she wants chapter one to be, she saved the state's budget. She stopped the borrowing from the KDOT fund and all this other stuff. And she sees this tax cut proposal as being too big and endangering that legacy. Um, in terms of could it have been avoided, um, I couldn't say really, but there's obviously some sentiment that they, they want to give it another go because she didn't have to call a special session and they could have pushed back and said, you know, no, we'll go into special session, but we won't do anything. But they're still kind of putting those feelers out there that they'd love to get something done. Yeah, it is an election year, a major yep. year also for tax relief. It, That's probably what the voters want to see. Um, let's also talk about some of the other issues that could come up during special session. 
Um, I know the Chiefs star bonds deal, the package that we were looking at prior to adjourning, um, this could potentially come back up. Do you think that it'll get far? That's a great question. Um, as you know, Rebecca, I'm a real skeptic on this. Uh, the proposed football stadium is extremely expensive, and I don't think that star bonds to fund that whole thing could ever be paid off with the revenue at the site. Um, it really is a Hail Mary, if you like your football metaphors. Um, and besides that, the Chiefs weren't really the issue in the Jackson County vote. It was more about the Royals. Um, but at the same time, everybody loves sports. It's free publicity. Anybody can make a fancy CGI of a new image of a football stadium that looks cool. So yeah, they might try it. And the Royals are a little disgruntled, so it's possible that the Royals are in play. But it's still a Hail Mary because it'd be way more expensive than like the Sporting Kansas City Stadium, which was a successful Starbonds project, but much less expensive and a much smaller stadium. All right, Michael, thank you so much. When we come back, the race for Congressional District 2 is on. We'll look at some of the biggest issues in that race and later an exclusive sit down interview with one of the candidates. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Twenty seven News is working for you, bringing you extensive sports coverage of state competitions, local baseball and softball action all over the place. We'll bring you all the highlights. Our team has been out everywhere today. Hours of hard work pays off for local athletes looking for a state title. Hardenberger goes all 17. She struck out 30 batters. Two run shot gives the Eagles the lead. It was the most fun I've ever had coaching. In. 27 News working for you. The Storm Track Weather Cam Network on 27 News. More cameras covering your community, giving you a live, exclusive look at weather as it rolls across Northeast Kansas. That is the view in Holton as that storm is starting to clear out. Working for you to provide advance warning of changing conditions. The Storm Track Weather Cam Network, available live to you anytime, online, and on the 27 News mobile app. Sponsored by Prairie Band Casino and Resort. Craving something different and delicious? Check out the area's food trucks at Tasty Trucks. With fresh ingredients, unique recipes, and a dash of local love. Menus and locations are at your fingertips at ksnt.com slash tasty trucks or the 27 News mobile app. Start your Friday with a donut. Fox 43 AM Live and Circle Coffee Company are giving away donuts every week to a lucky business. We'll draw a winner on Wednesday and deliver the treats on Friday. Sign up your business today for a chance to win. Sponsored by Circle Coffee Company. I went to Gelman's Pilates studio. Oh. Kelly, maybe we'll do a duet together. A duet? A yes. duet. <laughs> so weird. Next live, Leslie Odom Jr. and Eric Dane. Monday at 11 on 27 KSNT. This week's Pets and Needs Spotlight is Lorelei. Lorelei is a three-year-old pit bull mix. She is very smart and knows how to sit, shake, and roll over. She enjoys playing with other dogs and is incredibly friendly. You can meet Lorelei at Helping Hands Humane Society. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. It's a race we're watching this year. The seat for Congressional District 2 is up for grabs. And Michael, let's take a look at a poll that came out from Coefficient showing a huge lead for Derek Schmidt in that race. Here's how the candidates stack up based on that poll that came out last month. So Derek Schmidt coming in at 44% of the 1,500 Republican voters polled. They're leaning toward him. He's the former attorney general. And we also have Jeff Cars. He's coming in at 4%. He's a former Letourneur staffer and Trump appointee. And then former Kansas Livestock Association president and self-proclaimed cowboy Sean Tiffany is coming in at 3%. As far as undecided voters, though, we're looking at 49% undecided in that poll. So there are also some key issues voters are concerned about based on what we were looking at in that poll as well. The border mm -hmm. comes in at number one, then followed by cutting taxes, then inflation to round out the top three. So what's your take on this race, Michael? Well, I definitely think Derek Schmidt is the front runner. And the simplest explanation for that is name recognition. Um, w when we dive deeper into those polling results, we see that with those other candidates, a lot of voters have never heard of them. 
And the, Derek Schmidt being a former gubernatorial candidate and attorney general, he's got that built-in name recognition. When you are running for an open seat, if you haven't held office before, your biggest enemy is actually not the other candidates, it's all the voters who have never heard of you. And that's one of the reasons why you have to raise and spend a lot of money, like we're seeing Sean Tiffany do with his controversial commercial. You're just trying to get the voters to show up at the voles who know who you are. And as an incumbent, uh, not for this seat, but in other races, Derek Schmidt has a built-in advantage. All right, Michael, thank you so much. Well, former Attorney General Derek Schmidt is one of the candidates in this race, as we said, and we're hearing from him next. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Finally, vacation. A moment to relax, unplug, and enjoy some peace and quiet. Except you're not on vacation this year because your old wood windows need expensive maintenance and repairs. Maybe you'll see the beach next year. At Renewal by Anderson, our exclusive long-lasting Fibrex windows give you the durability of wood and the low maintenance of vinyl. So relax and let your windows work hard instead of you. Visit our website to claim this month's offer and schedule your free consultation. The Manhattan Weather Cam, sponsored by Cable Dahmer. Because McCrite Plaza has been family-owned and operated since 1975, we are able to make decisions that keep you independent and in the game. Get a game plan and join the winning team at McCry Plaza. It changed the course of history. And now for the 80th anniversary of D-Day, we're taking you back to the beaches of Normandy. Honoring the bravery, resiliency, and enduring legacy of those who served. Watch D-Day, the greatest victory. Wednesday, June 5th at 7 p.m. on 27 KSNT. Sponsored locally by Devon James Injury Lawyers. Would you rather hear about sports from people who like to talk sports or hear from the people who actually play and coach sports? The best predictor of future success is past success. K Nation has the interviews and coverage you want for all things KU and K State. When you do the small things correctly, big things will happen. Join us every Sunday night after 27 News at 10 for another exciting week of K Nation. Sponsored by 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Are y'all ready? Ready, ready, ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This spring, Kelly's all new. Weekdays at 3 on 27 KSNT. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. Well, in his first exclusive sit down interview, former Kansas Attorney General Derek Schmidt is talking about his return to politics after losing the gubernatorial race in 2022. It's one of the first questions I asked, along with how far he'll go to support former President Donald Trump and where he shifted his focus this year. Take a look. And you've had some time off. Um, after, you know, a loss to Governor Kelly in the gubernatorial race in 2022. Now you're making a return to the political arena. So what inspired you to come back to politics? Yeah, well, I've been really blessed, uh, Rebecca, and I had no intention of being a candidate for anything this year. I've just been enjoying being a private citizen and, and uh, practicing law and working out on our farm and spending time with the family and thought that's where I was staying. Uh, Congressman LaTurner's announcement was a surprise to me. I really expected he was going to be running for re-election and probably would serve there for many more years. I respect his decision. Uh, he says he made it for family reasons, and I think that's admirable that he's weighed that out. Um, but it really caused us to take a look, uh, an unexpected opportunity to serve. Um, I like to say I had three or four sleepless nights when we were sort of tossing and turning and sorting through it, made a decision. I've slept like a baby ever since, and so I think it was the right one to get back in. And, and I just, I think, I think I have more to offer. And so, I, you know, I love this state. I love the second district. It's been my home uh, all of my life. And I think, uh, I think we can make a difference. So I'm excited to be in and running, and it really is nice to be back connecting with people again. All right. Well, what were some of the things that you learned from the past election cycle? Mm -hmm. So toward the end, I know as we were in that final stretch of the race, we saw a push to tie the Kelly campaign to funding for drag shows, mm -hmm. uh, which the Kansas Department of Commerce then called blatantly false. Uh, they later gave an explanation for that funding source, ultimately saying that, you know, that state money wasn't used for that event. So if you could go back, would you change anything specifically about the strategy behind that campaign and maybe focusing on other issues aside from, you know, those issues uh, in the final stretch there. 
Well, we're not going to relitigate 2022. We had a good campaign. I, at, like most political campaigns, it had its pluses and its not such pluses, and that's true for both sides. And voters made a decision and we moved on. Uh, I think this election is about federal policy and it's about going forward what we have to offer to Kansas. Uh, you know, I would just say this, one of the things I did learn in, uh, uh, actually throughout my time in public service, but certainly in that most recent campaign, is that it is just, it, it is so critical uh, to, as the noise happens and the money flows in from out of state and people spend millions of dollars telling folks uh, who you are, who you aren't, you, you just got to keep your eye on the ball. And uh, my eyes firmly planted on the ball for this race. Okay, so then what will you be focusing on this year as you run for Congress? Yeah, I think it's really important that we have somebody in the 2nd District to follow Congressman LaTurner who will continue to stand tall for our conservative values. I think it is generally a more conservative district. Uh, it's certainly one that I feel very comfortable in having, having you know, represented my friends and neighbors there for much of my life. Uh, but I do think there are a handful of things that have to be at the top of the to-do list. Uh, I talk about them really as the three I's. It's easy to sort of remember and characterize. I think dealing with the illegal immigration crisis on our southern border has to be job one. It does not have to be this way. This is a manufactured crisis as the result of bad government policy in Washington, and we know that because the crisis wasn't on this scale when we had different policies under President Trump. So we know how to fix it. We have to have the will to do it, and I look forward to being a part of that. Uh, secondly, the second I, if you will, uh, is the inflation issue. And that, for me, reflects uh, sort of a broader concern about spending and taxation and all of those government policies that just poured money uh, out into the economy and resulted in driving prices up and making daily life less affordable for many, many Kansas families. We can't wave a wand and fix everything, but we can at least sort of dial back the spigot on this huge amount of money flowing out of Washington that continues to drive inflationary pressures. Uh, and then third of all, uh, I call it the intrusion of big government into our lives. And we've talked about this many times when I served as Attorney General. I'm passionate about this issue. Uh, look, I, the, 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 the government structure that we have today, the enormity of the federal government that does everything from trying to regulate gas cook stoves to, uh, you know, there was an effort by the IRS to, I say, spy on our bank accounts, require your bank to report every time you wrote a check more than $600. Those are so far removed from the freedom-loving country that the founders intended or frankly that existed even two and a half generations ago. We, we don't have to turn the country on its head in order to say we've got to calm this down and move in the direction uh, of less bureaucratic intrusion into our lives. And here's why that uh, uh, you know, really is an appealing issue to me in terms of this race for Congress. As Attorney General, I fought that for 12 years, but we, did, we had imperfect tools. It was when Congress had failed to rein in the administrative state, we had no choice but to go to court and ask a judge to help us as sort of the last line of defense. That's not the most efficient way to deal with the problem, as I said many times previously. It's just all we had at that point. What really needs to happen is Congress needs to do its job. And that doesn't mean the headline grabbing flashy stuff. It means the day-to-day -day grind of difficult questions being asked to agencies, of holding agencies accountable, of writing tightly structured laws, not these broad grants of power to the bureaucrats that then can go out and, and act within these wide ranges. Um, we're in this mess because in part Congress has punted and hasn't worked. And, and I just I want to roll up my sleeves and try to solve some of these problems uh, before somebody has to go sue these agencies on the back end. When announcing your run, I know that you gave former President Trump a shout out, you know, saying these past four years have made America or made it clear that America was stronger when President Trump served mm -hmm. in the White House. And I look forward to working with him and others next year. Yes, to truly make America great again. So Trump currently facing some legal challenges, as we know. Are you planning on voting for Trump this year, even if he's convicted of a crime? And are you seeking his endorsement this year like you did in 2022? Well, I'm assuming that uh, President Trump will be the Republican nominee. It certainly looks that way at this point. And assuming he is the Republican nominee, absolutely I'm voting for him. I think he would be a very strong nominee, and I hope to see him back in office. Uh, in terms of his endorsement, I would welcome it. Uh, this race is about the uh, people of the 2nd District, and I'm focused, as I also said in my, uh, in my announcement, I'm focused on their views, priorities, and interests being the guidepost always, uh, both in this campaign and then serving in public office. Uh, but I would certainly welcome the President's support, as I would welcome the support from many people. Even if he's convicted, though, of like a crime oh, and... Oh, certainly. And if you look at... Um, you know, if you look at this trial that's going on in New York now, I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it's just shameful. I mean, I've watched a lot of trials in my life, 
And this one uh, is nothing that the justice system or the Republic ought to be proud of. The case should never have been brought, uh, and it certainly should never result in a conviction. So I, uh, I'm frustrated with the justice system. It's New York. They'll do whatever they do in New York, but that doesn't change how the rest of us uh, ought to view the stakes for our country in this election. Also to note, since our interview with Schmidt, Trump has been convicted. Where does Schmidt stand on bipartisanship? Will he work across the aisle if he gets to Congress? That answer, next. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. The 27 News Storm Tracker is sponsored by D.L. Smith Electric, bringing your vision to life. At the Blind Tiger Brewery, we strive for perfection to produce excellence. In our kitchen and brewery, perfection is our goal. How about our chicken fried steak? No one makes it like we do. Savor our Blind Tiger craft beers. Always a variety of styles to fit every taste. So, whether you come for the food, the beer, or the atmosphere, we strive for perfection so you experience excellence. Blind Tiger, always brewing up something great. Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant, 37th in Kansas. <laughs> It's Memorial Day Madness at the Mattress Hub, and now's the time to save big. All the best brands in sleep, up to $1,000 off with hot buys from $2.99. Or instant savings with Tempur-Pedic or Purple Mattress, and no interest financing for up to 60 months. Only at the Mattress Hub. Don't wait, Northeast Kansas. Reserve your ticket now for the St. Jude Dream Home Giveaway. Reserve your tickets by June 20th, and you'll be eligible to win the house and a $2,500 gift certificate at Sutherland's Topeka. Visit KSNT.com or call 800-846-2640 to reserve your chance for only $100. Please join 27 KSNT in this community-wide effort supporting the life-saving mission of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Y'all hear us blow out the subwoofer? It's TV's biggest morning party, live with Kelly and Mark. Boom, boom. Big stars and big surprises. Plus, are you rooting for me or against me? Don't miss the fun on the number one entertainment talk show. You think the other talk shows complain about us? They're like, it's too loud over there. Weekdays at 11 on 27 KSNT. Don't miss the Evans United Shows Carnival at the Stormont Vale Event Center. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. We're continuing our talk with former Attorney General turned Congressional candidate Derek Schmidt. Republicans in the U.S. House have had their share of scuttles this year, a push to oust Speaker Mike Johnson prompting a rift in the GOP as some lawmakers lean into a more conservative stance. I asked Schmidt where he stands and whether he plans to work across the aisle. Do you see yourself working toward a compromise with lawmakers across the aisle if you get to Congress? So, or is there, you know, maybe there a concern that you could see some backlash for doing so? For example, when we saw some of the more conservative House members try to oust Speaker Johnson after he worked across the aisle to get an aid package through. So in addition to what I asked earlier about possibly facing, you know, backlash for working across the aisle, where would you have stood on this um, scenario if you were in office? Do you think Johnson should have been ousted? No, I don't. I think that it has not served the country well to have had this rapid fire uh, changing of leadership among the narrow Republican majority in the House of Representatives. Uh, I think it's important to remember the bigger picture that right now we have a weak, in my view, uh, president who's allowing uh, some of the more extreme elements in the Democrat Party and the left in this country to drive his agenda and his actions. And we have a Democrat-led Senate with uh, Chuck Schumer from New York who is uh, acquiescing in that. The House is the last line of defense, and it's the last line of defense by, at some moments, a single vote, depending on exactly where some of the members are, you know, on a given day. And so, you know, it's a very difficult balancing act, but we certainly don't want to give up that last line of defense, nor do we want to be so distracted by all of the uh, internal squabbles uh, in the Republican caucus in the House that we're not focused on the country's business. Okay. Um, so no fear of facing backlash if you were to work across the aisle then? 
No, I mean, it always depends on the issue. Uh, I, I think compromise is not a dirty word, but I do think concession can be, and capitulation almost always is. And so, you know, my view is you, you, you tell people why you're running, which I'm doing. You go stand strong on your principles. You listen to your people back home and reflect their hopes and desires and aspirations. You represent your district consistent with what you told people would do. And if you can bring together people from the other party or different factions within my Republican Party, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But you don't set that as the goal. You set that as a means to accomplish what you told people you were going to do when you asked for their votes. Okay. Now, right now, it looks like you'll be facing off with a couple more candidates in this race. What do you think sets you apart from your opponents, and do you think you're shoe-in for this position? Well, there are no shoe-ins. Uh, you know, we start off in a very strong position. I think you're aware of some polling data that became public about a week ago it has me starting off with a very strong lead, about 40 points. But we're going to work very, very hard, uh, as we have been, for the next 11 weeks uh, until Election Day to earn the votes of everybody in this district, certainly all the Republican voters in this primary. Uh, and we're going to try to build that lead, uh, not ride its coattails. Having said that, uh, I, you know, I do think we're in a very strong position. I am grateful for that. I think it's because Kansans know me. They understand what they get uh, should they hire me for this position. And that's a, a strong conservative voice that will stand tall for our principles and values in Congress. I think that's what we need in Congress. And uh, you know, I think one of the strengths I bring to the position is I know our district very well, and folks know me because I've represented it for a very long time in different capacities. And uh, the phrase hit the ground running sometimes can be a little overused and trite, but I do think that I bring the ability to be an effective voice for the second district right from day one, and I, I'd like to do that. All right. Now, if you don't get this seat, do you see yourself running again for maybe another position like governor? Well, you know, obviously you never say never. Like I already told you, maybe it was off camera, I didn't have any intention of being a candidate for anything this year. I'm enjoying being a private citizen. I've been practicing law since I left public service, uh, doing a little farming and, and, and just sort of enjoying the blessings of liberty, you might say. Um, and then this came along as a surprise. But look, I don't have any plans to run for something else down the road. Didn't have plans to run for this. I do love to serve. Uh, that's something I've, I've it's perhaps not surprising to me, but it, I've learned it about myself as I've been uh, out in the private sector. I've, I've enjoyed this time. And should things not go well in the election, I'm very blessed. I'll continue to practice law and farm a little bit and, and be an active member of my community and find other ways to give back. But this is what I want to do. All right, and that was your look inside Kansas politics. If you want to keep up to date on all things Kansas politics, then follow us on social media. Follow us on X at NKS Politics and on Facebook, just search Inside Kansas Politics. We'll also post the full video on YouTube, just search KSNT News. And check ksnt.com slash inside dash Kansas dash politics for past episodes. If you have a story you want Kansas State legislators to hear or topics you think we should cover, let us know. You can email us at ikp at ksnt.com. We'll see you right here, same time, same place. Have a good day.